Hey oh, it's Jacqueline at Pace It Us PhD. It is the last full weekend before we leave for our trip down to Orlando. We'll be spending two weeks down there visiting both Universal and Walt Disney World. Today I'm gonna get to packing. Come along and see what I bring. All right, sprawled out across the bed here is just about everything I'm planning to pack. There are a few things not shown here, but let's go over it. Starting with clothes. So this is the outfit I'm gonna wear on the plane. It's very layered. I've got a pair of jeans down here and then a purple shirt. This is a camisole I'll wear under for light layer, my purple spirit jersey, and a rain slicker. Then either on the airplane or once we land, I'm going to change out of jeans and into this skort so we can be ready to hit the theme parks right away. Hopefully, you know, assuming there's no huge delays in our flight. But then yeah, I'll have all these layers I'll be wearing on the plane. I'll have to throw them in a bag or something once we land, but those will be good versatile pieces for me moving forward. Our first full day is planned on being a Volcano Bay Day. It does a little bit depend on weather, but assuming we make it out that day, here's what I'm gonna wear. Got my swim bottoms, here is a tankini, and then a cover up. Then once we're feeling done at Volcano Bay, I do think we're gonna hang out in City Walk for a bit, so I've just got this purple dress ready to go. It's, it's that kind of material that doesn't really wrinkle, so it'll be good to just like scrunch up in the Volcano Bay locker and change into when we're done. The next day is a Universal Day, maybe Disney Springs, so I have this pineapple shirt and this blue skort. And then the next two days are our intense universal days. These are the days that we have the express pass. So for both of these days, I've got just a t-shirt and squirt lined up. Both of these squirts do have zippy pockets, which I highly suggest. You can put your room key in there and your cell phone for any of the rides that don't require you can't have a cell phone. So there's only a few rides with metal detectors that really mean you can't have your cell phone. But otherwise, if you can fully secure your cell phone, you can have it with you in line. For example, the last time we went to ride Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure, we thought we had to store everything in the lockers, but they actually did not have metal detectors. So as long as you can secure your cell phone, you can have it with you in line. This will be our last proper Universal Day, and then we are moving over to Disney. This is the outfit I'm hoping to meet Moana in. I'm planning on rope dropping Epcot this morning and meeting Moana. And then the next day is our party day. We will be doing Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party that evening. That costume is going to be a surprise though, but for what we're gonna wear during the day, I've got some purple shorts and a t-shirt. So this is half of the outfits for the trip. In general, you can see I am trying to stick to one outfit a day. Typically when we go to Orlando, I plan on a couple outfits a day, just because it does get so sweaty, we do often take a break back at the hotel where I literally shower and change. But I'm hoping the weather will be a little bit kinder and I can stick to roughly one outfit a day. I do have a few backups and extra pieces. We'll go over that in a minute. But yeah, my plan is to try to not overpack as much this time as I usually do. Moving on to the second week of the trip then, here is my outfit for that Saturday. We aren't going into theme parks this day, so I don't need to be as worried about functionality. This is a really fun rainbow dress. It is totally polyester though, so sweat wise, not so great. But hey, if we're just hanging out in resorts, it should be fine. We also are planning on doing laundry this day. So everything from earlier or more or less everything will probably get washed and will be available to me once again. So if I do feel like I need to be changing outfits every day because it is too sweaty, I will have options. Sunday, we are going back to Epcot. I'm trying to get a ton of character meet and greets done this day and I wanna wear this fun green dress. It really reminds me of Frozen. It definitely is not like the actual rose mauling pattern, but there's something about it that feels like you might find this motif in their home. So trying to meet Anna and Elsa in this dress and then whoever else will have me. We're also doing Fantasmic later that night. I'm hoping to, again, just wear this dress the whole time. But if not, I do sort of have this auxiliary pair of pants and then this is a t-shirt from earlier. I'm probably going to be wearing this the Monday prior and I'm assuming it'll be washed by then so I can wear this t-shirt with these pants. Monday is gonna be a long day. We're planning on starting at Animal Kingdom and then hopping over to Magic Kingdom and then also it's Epcot extended evening hours. So for now I have this outfit slated. It's like a sparkly purple shirt. I'm not too sure if you can see if it's sparkly but there's kind of glitter in the fabric. And then I'll rewear the skirt from earlier. Again, if I need to change because it's getting colder, here's my auxiliary outfit. Hopefully I won't need to use this on back-to-back -back nights. Tuesday, we're doing Hollywood Studios in Epcot. I'm planning on wearing this dark purple dress. It has these fun perforations in the skirt. It did also come with an undershort, the same color, so no worries about peekaboos. But yeah, I think this is a really good versatile dress. It was made sort of for working out. I think it seems like it's that right kind of fabric, so hopefully I won't sweat too much. Then the next day is pretty much Magic Kingdom all day. I'm gonna wear this fun crinkly rainbow dress. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen this dress a bunch of times. Thursday is a no parks day for us. We have some fun meals planned out though, so I'm gonna wear this very cute navy jumpsuit that my partner got me for my birthday. It's cotton, so it's fairly breathable, and it does have pockets. I didn't really wanna wear it to a park though, just because I find it cumbersome to get in and out of a jumpsuit every time I need to use the restroom. Then our last parks day is Friday, and I'm planning on re-wearing this blue squirt from the prior week. 
and I've got this very sparkly sequin top for it. Saturday, we just fly home, so I don't have a specific outfit picked out for that, but between doing laundry and a few of these extra pieces I'm gonna show you in a minute, I assume I'll have something to wear. For auxiliary items, I do have two sweaters. I've got a thin navy sweater and then a still pretty thin, but slightly more medium weight gray sweater. Here is a backup t-shirt. It's a light blue again, sort of with these sparkles in the fabric. One backup camisole, this one's white. I will be wearing a beige one on the plane. Backup swimsuit, obviously PJs. Here is a backup dress. This is a long dress. It goes all the way to the floor. So I think it will be good for nights, evenings, if I wanna change out of my outfit earlier in the day, which mostly are skorts. And then one pair of leggings in case it really does actually get cold, I can layer this under dresses or skorts just to have another layer of protection. Let's talk about non-clothing items then, starting with head accessories. So I have this one, blue and white polka dot wired headband situation. And then in terms of ears, I think I have settled on bringing my pineapple ears, my silver and gold ears, and then my purple ears. This is subject to change though. We'll see what actually makes it on vacation with me. We will bring our Magic Band Pluses with us in our individual backpacks, like on our person, but then our older Magic Bands, just a couple of them, we're gonna put probably in the check luggage just in case. And then here I just have a couple of garment bags to do laundry in. Inside of these, I've got dryer sheets and color catchers, so making laundry easy to do on vacation. Here is my jewelry roll. I do like to have an excessive amount of choices, so lots of rings, a handful of pairs of earrings, probably like six or seven necklaces. <laughs> This is sort of what I call my foot care kit. We've got moleskin, we've got body glide, little pair of scissors, everything I'll need to hopefully prevent blisters. This is makeup that's not liquid, so I'm not too sure if I'll bring this in my carry-on or if I'll check it. Then I've got all my Band-Aid kit. This is meds, so fiber pills, ibuprofen, Dramamine, basically anything you can think of. And then my DOP kit, which kind of never gets unpacked for the most part. It's, you know, a hairbrush, a razor, deodorant, all the things I always need. Then day of, I will have to pack up my toothbrush and my retainers. For some other non-clothing items, we have some ponchos. My partner kind of prefers ponchos to raincoats. I am wearing my rain slicker on the plane, so I'll have this in case it's really gonna be rainy. But if it looks like it might just rain for 20 minutes or an hour or something, you know, typical Florida rain, we can bring poncho with us into the park. These are my hair accessory choices. So a couple bows, a lot of scrunchies, stuff like that. This is all lipstick for me. It's probably extremely excessive, but if we're checking a bag anyway, and a lot of that's liquid, I thought I'd fill it up. Here is the bag of checked liquid. So this is like shampoo, conditioner, dry shampoo, body wash, things that aren't essential, but that we do want. This is my partner's liquid bag that they'll bring on the plane. They still need to add their face routine, but otherwise they've got, you know, their curl cream ready to go, allergy spray, sunscreen, shaving cream, and then my liquids that I'm gonna take on the plane, I've got a little bit of makeup, but it's mostly my skincare routine. It's pretty buried in there. Liquids wise, here is what we've got. We've got makeup remover, face wash, several of those, one for me, my partner, and an extra. Toners, serums, more serums, eye cream, morning moisturizer, so this has SPF in it, some more serums. This specifically is the Clarins Lotus Oil. I love this stuff. Face specific sunscreen. And then I've also got a little guy from Supergroup that we will bring in my bag to theme parks and such. And then night moisturizers in my Cadence little container as well as just some extras in case I'm running low. Lip stuff. These are my glitters. So here we have body glitter and then I'll probably only use these on my eyes. These are Lemonhead LA. I love these ones. The stay is so good. This one is from ColourPop. Hand cream, and then we've got primer for makeup, mascara, foundation, Skin Feels Good, which is more of like a BB cream, I guess. Concealer, all-nighter setting spray, lipstick remover. This is a body glitter from ColourPop. Then we are gonna be gone for two weeks, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to wash my hair. So I've got shampoo, shampoo, conditioner, conditioner. Not sure how much I'll need, to be honest. Back there, there is some dry shampoo, as well as sort of like hair serums that I'll put on after I have to wash my hair. This is a curl cream that my partner will use. Here's, it's a 10 leave-in, and then shaving cream and body wash. And here are the checked liquids, so things that is just way too big for the most part to even dream of bringing on to the plane. Specifically, we have a sport sunscreen lotion. It's supposed to be waterproof-ish. So we're gonna bring this to Volcano Bay. And then in here we have two other sunscreens as well, one spray and one lotion type. 
itch cream, bug spray, toothpaste, hand cream, additional hand sanitizer. We each have one of those in our carry-on liquids bag as well. And then specific lotion that's for like post sun. Then I'm gonna bring three pairs of sunglasses probably. I want a pair that if I lose them at Volcano Bay, I won't be too sad about. So that's this pair. If it you know falls off in the lazy river or something, that's a bummer, but I think these were like 10 bucks and I've had them probably for 10 years. And then my more go-to sunglasses will be this black pair. These don't have the nose pads, so if I braid my hair or something, that'll be better for that. And then this reflective heart pair with the nose pads. One of these will go in my purse and then one will probably go in a checked bag. And this is the purse that I'm planning on bringing. I will put this in my backpack, which I will carry onto the plane. I actually just got it. I've been using it for a few days and I'm pretty happy with its functionality. It is a convertible backpack purse, so I've got it in backpack mode right now. There's also hooks on the side though to make it a shoulder bag or a short crossbody bag. But yeah, it's got a pretty big inside. It's got these two slip pockets and a zippered pocket. The back has a zippered pocket. The front also has a zippered pocket. So it's a nice medium size for me. Other than this, we have like a travel humidifier and a travel steamer that we will probably try to pack if there's room, but it's not the end of the world. We've also talked about maybe trying to bring our own towels to bring into Volcano Bay so we don't have to pay to rent towels, but again, it just depends on how much room we have. All right, these are the shoes I'm gonna bring. We'll start with, I have these purple Allbirds. These are tree pipers. I'll probably wear these on the plane. They're kind of the bulkiest shoe. Very good, very reliable, pretty dang comfortable, and I think stylish enough. Then I've got more of a trainer. These are New Balances, but they've got this fun holographic side. I think it makes them look a little more fashionable. Then for sandals, I have Chacos. I have this nicer pair of sandals. These are Fionics. I do put these little Ango patches. It helps me not get blisters on the bottom of my feet. And then finally, a pair of flip-flops. I know some people bring water shoes specifically for Volcano Bay. I'm just gonna wear my flip-flops and hope that, you know, when I kick them off at the entrance of a ride, no one's gonna steal my flip-flops. In terms of how I pack or my packing strategy, I really try to do it from a worst case scenario perspective. That meaning worst case, my checked bag gets lost and I don't get it back in time for my vacation. Also, I'm planning on carrying onto the plane a backpack and a roller bag. So also worst case, if they have to check my roller bag and I never get that back, do I have a minimal amount of what I need to survive at least for a few days until we can get to a store or something in my backpack. This also means that I don't pack my clothes chronologically, I pack them by importance. For example, I am very unwilling to not have my Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party costume. The key portions of that will be coming with me. Ideally, I'll be able to put them in my backpack. At the very least, so they're going in my roller bag and not my checked bag. Similarly, I'm going to be wearing a pair of shoes on the plane, of course. Like I said, it'll probably be my Allbirds, but I do find it very important to have more than one pair of shoes. So more likely than not, I'm gonna try to get my Chacos into my backpack as well. Then of course, the obvious things are gonna come with me in my backpack everything I would bring in my purse. So my phone, my wallet, I'm gonna have some charging cords in there just in case all my other charging cords get lost. I'll also have my camera in there and then definitely all of the meds I need, I'm gonna keep on my person. I'll also be prioritizing getting my Volcano Bay outfit into not the checked bag. For me, swimsuits are a very fussy item. I think it would be pretty hard to replace a swimsuit in an ideal manner on very short notice. I wanna have a lot of fun at Volcano Bay, which means I need to be comfortable. There is only so much you can fit in a backpack that will fit under your seat. So that may end up going in my roller bag and I will just pray that I don't have to check my roller bag. Or if it's obvious we're going to have to check our roller bag, then I might just dig through it and, and bring that out real fast and you know carry it on with me somehow. But yeah, generally you are going to see me sorting my outfits based on what I think is most important. The key things I'm gonna have on my person and then the next most important things will go in my roller bag that I'm planning on bringing onto the plane. And then anything else can go in the check bag. And if that gets lost, I will be super bummed, but it won't be the end of the world. The other important consideration I have for any trip when I'm packing is the rule of thumb that two is one and one is none. So for anything mission critical, it's really important to me to have backups. You'll notice, for example, I have three pairs of sunglasses. Granted, you can buy sunglasses and replace them pretty easily. I just don't wanna have to deal with that. If I lose a pair or if a pair breaks, I am still set. Back when I wore glasses regularly, I would always travel with a backup pair of glasses because if something happened to my pair of glasses, well, that's pretty mission critical. I think probably a little bit because of this philosophy, I do tend a little more toward overpacking, but again, I'm trying really hard to limit how much I'm packing this trip. From what you've seen, you can tell I do not literally have two outfits a day picked out and ready to pack. So for me, I think this is a win. All right, let's go ahead and get packing, see where everything lands and what we can sort into the backpack versus in my roller bag versus what will end up going in the check bag. 
All right, let's start with an easy one. Like I said, it's important to me to have a second pair of shoes. So got my Chacos here, shoe bag. Let's be clean-ish. Okay, and then get these in the bottom of my backpack. Off to a great start. When we get off the plane, I'm gonna change into this skirt so I can be comfy in Orlando out of my jeans. And then this is my Volcano Bay outfit. I'm gonna to try to put these in a very small packing cube and get that into my backpack. Here we go. It's chubby, so I might end up having to trim down on this would be my guess, but we'll see. My Friday outfit and hidden away from you parts of my Halloween costume. My outfit for meeting Moana. One of my zippered skirt outfits for Universal. My jumpsuit for that second Thursday that we're not going into theme parks. And that looks pretty full to me. The idea of these shelving systems is to not pack any of them too full because you do want to have room to squish stuff. So we'll zip that up. Purple dress for post Volcano Bay. My Epcot meet and greet dress for the non Moana Epcot meet and greet day. This skirt is slated to pull double duty. So we've got it for Universal Day with this pineapple top and then for Disney Day with this sequin top. And that might be that for this shelf too. Pretty full. Honestly, that's probably a little too full, but we're just gonna try and see what happens. This is my PJ sleep shirt and then a gray sweater. My final universal outfit. It's dark purple dress. And yeah, for the shelves, I might not push it any further. I probably could try to squeak in another t-shirt or something thin, but I'm just gonna fill the bottom with like socks and stuff and then go from there. All right, now I'm going to attempt to squish this thing up, compress it. I'm very bad at doing this, so watch me clumsily go along while surely I'm fast forwarding through this in the edit. That was not bad this time, actually. Okay, so we just have a little bit room left above this and a little bit on the sides, but not too, too much, honestly. I'm gonna try to fit my dock kit in here and then I'm not so sure what else. So here's my dock kit, easily fits actually. I wonder if it'll fit sideways. I think that'll work. Got a few more clothes in here. Yeah, that'll fit for sure. I feel like this is a long shot, but I'm gonna try to see if I can get my New Balance tennis shoes in here. Maybe if they're just in like the perfect configuration, it'll work. I mean, without these clothes, they fit. With these clothes, I don't know that my suitcase would close. <laughs> they're probably too tall to stand up, unfortunately. Well, I don't know, let's try. If we fail, so be it. I do also want to try to slide my flip flops here in these side slots. That should be fine. I don't see why it wouldn't. Last attempt will be my jewelry case. So actually maybe we'll slide that in where the flip flops were. And then can I still fit the flip flops? I think so. Okay, let's see if this closes. I, I'm guessing I'm gonna have to take this out, um, but I'd really like to not take it out.
I mean, I could really force it if I had to, but we're checking a bag anyway. So let me just take that out, put my dog kick like this. Hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> hmm. Shoes are proving problematic. Okay, what if we did one on each end? <laughs> Dop kit. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> it like just barely fits. I feel like my shoes are probably getting demolished. We'll see, we'll see if I end up repacking this or not. So then we've got my carry-on backpack right now. Again, it has shoes and this quite pudgy thing of clothes. Ideally, I could put my purse on top of this. Yeah, I think that'll work. This is meds and band-aids. I definitely want that on my person. And then my toothbrush and my retainer will have to do this morning up, but I need to make sure they'll fit. Ooh, you know, maybe I'm gonna put my shoes not in the main compartment, but in the second one. And then I'll put this pudgy thing in the bottom of the main compartment. Oh yeah, I think that's better. Okay, meds above my shoes. Retainer, toothbrush. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. I'll throw a few snacks in there as well. All right, we're hoping to make this our checked bag. I really don't wanna bring two checked bags. I really don't wanna bring a checked bag bigger than this, but we'll have to see how everything works out. We did buy this 40 liter packable duffel. So we're planning on bringing this. And then when we come back, we can check two bags, throw a dirty laundry in here or whatever. So if we really need to, we can use this from the get-go, but I would rather just pack it and then use it later. <laughs> First up, I am checking my ears. I've also put our old magic bands in here and a reusable straw. This is the um, DVC Welcome gift box. It ends up being like really good dimensions for this. I am sure they didn't plan it that way, but I'm very pleased about it. I am always concerned about my ears making it in transit. So I think having a box will make me feel better. Hopefully it will actually work as well. It does take up a lot of space though. Okay, here's the bag, packable duffel. That's not bad. These two are the rest of my clothes. Okay, I'll probably put that over something in a minute. Checked liquids. Really hope these don't explode. Okay, then this is almost everything else. So my last pair of sandals. I do have one pair of shoes out still, but of course I'll wear those on the plane. Foot care kit, lips, hair, backup sunglasses, laundry bags, color catchers, and dryer sheets. And then we've got our ponchos. Try to slot these in here. Well, it mostly works. <laughs> this bag is the portable steamer. I do hate ironing. So I think I'm gonna try to bring this. I might end up taking this out depending on how much my partner needs to put in the check bag. And yeah, we still even have a little room to spare. Honestly, depending on how much spare room we have after my partner puts things in this bag, we might end up bringing towels for Volcano Bay. We'll see if being cheap wins out. All right, last couple things for now. I do still have my liquids bag and my dry makeup. I thought about trying to slot this into my roller suitcase, but then things were getting kind of cramped. This I like to have in my backpack, even though we have TSA pre-check, I've never had to take my liquids out in a really long time, but you know, just in case. Maybe over the shoes, with the meds, with the makeup. And then toothbrush slot in anywhere really. OK, 
thing, not gonna lie, it's fat, but I think it works. We do still need to pack all of our electronics. I'm counting on my partner being able to fit that in their backpack. We also own a mini Theragun. It's a mini version of the big massage gun that like physical therapists use. It is a lifesaver. We both really love and need it. My partner will bring that either in their backpack or their carry-on roller bag. Then, you know, our reusable water bottles, we'll bring some snacks, but otherwise feeling pretty set. Less than a week now till we fly down to the magic. I can't wait. Let me know if you have any packing tips or hacks. I'm always looking to learn. I hate packing. I find this to be such a stressful and strenuous process. And if you guys have figured out how to make it better, easier, smoother, let me know. And if there's anything in particular that you pack for theme parks, I definitely want to hear about that too. For us, that's ponchos, a reusable straw, and then weird accessories like mouse ears. But otherwise, it's not really all that different from a normal trip for us. I'm looking forward to sharing the rest of the trip with you. Thank you so much to everyone who's liked the video, subscribed to the channel, rang the bell icon to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos, and generally interacted. It helps out in the eyes of the YouTube algorithm so much. These are free actions, and I just super appreciate it. Thanks for being here. I hope the rest of your day is magical, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.